Hi there, curious minds. In this session we will delve deeper into the fascinating world of psychology and the topic of classical conditioning. Let's get learning. Our journey begins in 1897, with a Russian physiologist named Ivan Pavlov. Pavlov is the scientist who discovered the concept we now call classical conditioning, a cornerstone in our understanding of human and animal behavior. He made this significant discovery by carefully observing the innate responses of dogs, sparking a major advancement in psychological study. Let's unpack the term classical conditioning. In its simplest form, it is a process where two stimuli are associated in such a way that they elicit a new, learned response. A stimulus, for those who might not be familiar, is something that provokes or stimulates a response. Pavlov was fascinated by the idea that some responses in dogs are innate, not learned. He was observing dog salivation in response to being fed when he stumbled onto something unusual, something that wasn't innate. Let's dive into his experiment. In Pavlov's study, dogs were presented with food, which we'll refer to as stimulus one. As they were given this food, a bell was rung, our second stimulus. Naturally, the food triggered salivation in the dogs, an innate response. Over time, Pavlov noticed that the dogs began to salivate not just when food was presented, but also when they heard the bell ring, even when no food was present. They had learned to associate the sound of the bell with food, and so a new response was created. The ringing bell was now enough to trigger salivation, even without the sight or smell of food. This association of two stimuli leading to a learned response is the essence of classical conditioning. Pavlov's dogs had learned to associate the sound of a bell, initially a neutral stimulus, with the presentation of food, thereby leading to a new response, salivation at the sound of the bell. But why is Pavlov's theory considered scientific? Well, because it's based on empirical evidence from a lab-controlled experiment. It's repeatable, observable, and testable, which are three crucial components of any scientific approach. However, while classical conditioning has contributed greatly to our understanding of behavior, it's not without its drawbacks. For instance, some critics see it as reductionist, meaning it oversimplifies complex behaviors and mental processes by reducing them to basic, mechanistic associations between stimuli and responses. Yet despite this, the influence of classical conditioning on the field of psychology can't be overstated. It's given us insight into how learning can occur through association, and has been foundational in developing therapies for phobias, anxieties, and other disorders. That wraps up our session. Remember, each day brings new learning opportunities. Until next time, stay curious.